Hey everybody, I'm Alan from You Do AV. Today we have a really cool installation. You guys know that saying, uh, the cobbler's children have no shoes? Well, welcome to my shoeless children. This is my, uh, we're in my RV right now. I'm in here a lot. And um, this, <laughs> I had to swap out my air conditioning unit and these wires are for like, there used to be a thermostat built into my air conditioning unit. And um, when I replaced it, the thermostat is no longer built inside and my heater's in another location. Long story short, I have wires ran exposed to like a thermostat that sits on my tabletop. It's super embarrassing. It's super embarrassing. Every time I'm studying, I see it. I hate it. I hate it. It's been like this for like six months. I gotta fix it. I gotta fix it. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get this wire. Uh, this is an RV, so this is actually, in my opinion, is gonna be a harder installation than in a house because the walls are skinnier, the roof is skinnier, there's probably gonna be more obstacles, but I, I still think we're gonna make it look legit, dude. We're gonna make it look really good, really easy. So uh, the goal is to take this wire, run it through the ceiling, we have to go this way, and then down a wall. I plan to put the thermostat here, kind of on the side. It's all gonna be kind of ninja skills. So let's get started. I don't know any way that we could pull off this job unless we use a scope and some professional wire fishing tools. So I do want to take a few minutes because every time I make a video like this, people kind of, they ask me a lot of questions about where did I get this? Where did I get this? Where did I find this? Do I really need this? Yeah, yeah, you do. If you want to do a pro install that doesn't have any holes, no damage, you're going to need to get a scope. You're going to need to get some um, fishing tools. So uh, let's talk about those right now. Every good custom installer should have an in-wall scope, okay? I use in-wall scopes almost on every single installation. It makes the job faster, cleaner, easier, way less holes, way less risk. Dude, I, I, I've i got a whole video where I talk about it. I'm just, in this video, we're gonna use an in-wall scope. I'm gonna go so far as to say that this job, there's no way we could pull this off unless we have the right fishing tools and unless we have a scope. I, I just cannot express enough. Um, I'm using the test long scope. I get asked about this a lot. I freaking love this scope. I worked out a deal so that if you guys use my coupon code, you guys get 10% off anything that they have on their site. Whether you get a test long scope or you get somebody else's scope, I love test long. I think they make the best ones. I love all the features about it. Um, I also love that I can record and all of the scope video that you see is gonna come off the recording from this thing here. And I will record video from the scope and put it into the video today. They make the best ones. And you use that coupon code that I've got flashed right now and I'll have it um, in the description below, and you're gonna get an extra 10% off everything. I'm using the NTS 500. Um, I'm using this one because I don't like the scopes that like pair to your phone. Um, I, I don't want things pairing to my phone. I, I just, I don't wanna worry about extra batteries. I don't wanna pull my phone out on installation. I'm afraid I'm gonna drop it or put a tool on it, get scratched or damaged, dust. Um, and there's also a little bit of a delay. I don't like the delay. Because sometimes I'm using the scope on one side and somebody's using a glow rod on the other and I'm giving them instructions in the delay. I just, I don't like it. Okay, I want everything in real time, live real time. Um, I have, I think my length of camera here is, I think I've got like the 30 foot. For what I do for home theater stuff, this is too long. Um, I kind of wish I got the shorter one. I think they have a 10 foot. Uh, I, I think that's the length. If you're just doing it for home theater stuff, 10 foot is about, is about what you want. The 30 foot one, it might be cool if you're doing it for plumbing and stuff, but I don't really use mine for plumbing. So uh, it just kind of makes it hard to put back in the box. Test long scopes, dude, the best. Use my coupon code. You're gonna get hooked up with some rad stuff. The leader in installation tools is a company called Labor Savings Devices. Labor Saving Devices Incorporated, LSD Incorporated. I've been using them since I first got in the business. They're really just an installer's best dream. They are, Everything installers want, all the tools, they, they're just custom made for installers. These aren't major manufacturers. These are, it's a small company like in Nebraska or something like that that just specializes in making tools for installers. Listen, they're not giving me a dime for making this video, okay? I'm making this video because I use their tools. I believe in their tools. I've been using them for a long time. Um, I think that they make the best stuff on the market. They did send me this kit for free. So, I mean, I guess that's something, but if any of you guys have ever made a video before, you'll know how long it takes and you'll know that like getting free tools is not really worth the time that we put into it. But I really want them to succeed. They're a fantastic company, I love the product. Enough of that. Okay, this right here is a toolkit called the Installer's Dozen. 
I've never used this kit before. I have like the installers like pro kit. Um, this is kind of catered to, to you guys, the homeowners that are, or maybe people are just starting out that don't need like a whole array of really cool uh, install tools. They could probably get by with the basics. That's what this is. This is the basics. Okay guys, we ran into a little bit of a hitch. We love the installers dozen. It's perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. After we shot the video, did the whole install, we told labor saving devices, great, perfect. Give us a link where our uh, viewers can go buy the product and there's no link. So we didn't know what to do. Long story short, labor saving devices said, well, why don't you guys just carry the product and you guys can sell it straight. In other words, if you guys wanna pick up your own installers dozen kit, you're gonna actually be getting it straight from us. Um, this is kind of a good and a bad thing because we had no intention of selling any product, but it's also a good thing because you're also helping out the channel. So if you decide to order a kit, you're actually going to be getting it straight from us in this exact box. Here's the kit. You might be getting this exact kit as a matter of fact. Remember, this is a professional's toolkit, so it's a little pricey, super high quality, best in the business, highly endorse it. Hopefully you pick one up. It's going to help us out. You guys are going to love it. On with the video. We open up the kit. And this is what we're looking at. Okay, we're gonna go through these things real quick. When Labor Saving Devices sent me the kit, they, they forgot to put a drill bit in mine. So I had to grab one of my own. I'm using a, a four foot half inch drill bit. Uh, yours does not come with a four foot half inch drill bit. Yours comes with a three foot, three eighths inch drill bit. So it's a little shorter, it's a little skinnier. It's a really good tool for installing one wire. Um, you might be able to get two wires in a three eighths inch hole, it's gonna be kind of tight. Uh, I do recommend, if you guys can, to get the, the half inch drill bit. I do like the half inch drill bit a little bit more. Stud finder, really good stud finder. I like these a lot. It comes with this really cool wire stripper. I like this wire stripper a lot. Um, you just go like this, you put the wire in the side, like that. When I pull the trigger, boom, it just strips it off. And so I went through the outside jacket, just like that. And then when you want to strip the wire, take the wire and you just stick it in there, pull the trigger, boom, and it comes off. How cool is that? This right here, dude, this thing is money. I love this thing so much. This is a template that we use to cut single gang, or if you use the whole template, that's a double gang. And you can hold it like this, so you can cut left or right, and it's got a level on it. This is the exact size that you need if you're gonna do a, an old work box. Dude, such a money tool, such a good tool right there. This right here, is a drill bit extension. Okay, so you would take your 3H drill bit and you can stick it in here, tighten up the Allens, and now the, the drill bit that comes in here is three feet long. Um, when you put this extension on here, it should be six feet long. Your 3H drill bit that does come with a kit would normally be packed in here, okay? Pretty cool little drywall saw right here. This right here is a tool that I haven't really used. I could see it being handy for somebody. Uh, I, I have an in-wall scope. This is kind of like a peeper. You look through the hole and you can kind of see around corners, uh, look inside of a wall and see around corners. Um, I have an in-wall scope, so I haven't used this, but I can see why that'd be handy for somebody who didn't have the scope. Here's some drill bits, three eighths, half inch, three quarters right here. This, in my opinion, is their best product. Their glow rods, oh man. Labor Saving Devices makes the best glow rods. I, are you kidding me? Touching a Greenly, touching a Greenly glow rod from Home Depot? Not in a million years, dude. Only, only Labor Saving Devices. I won't even touch anything else. Okay, these, they have these quick release ones that kind of, they, they go together and they snap together. They go together a lot faster than the twist on ones. You just kind of put them together like this and they snap together. These are okay, but I prefer the threaded ones. So I can like take a little screwdriver or something and I can stick it in there and it comes apart. So the kit that I, if you buy the kit for me, I, I have the threaded ones cause that's the kind that I prefer. So that's the kind that I'm providing for you guys. The other part is this, dude, they have all of these adapters that go on the ends of your glow rods. Like this guy right here, this is kind of a big adapter that goes on the end of your glow rods. This way, as your glow rods are fishing around, they bounce off of obstacles instead of just like hitting obstacles and stopping. So this would be if you're going through an attic, sometimes going through walls, but you know, you'd never be able to get this through a hole because it's too big. But if you're going through an open space that had a lot of obstacles in the middle, this would kind of help the glow rod bounce along. Here's a light. This light is not for your glow rods. This light is for your gopher pole. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
Um, here's that tool. This, this goes on your thumb. This is the tool that you use to release the, uh, the quick release. Okay, I like this tool a lot. This is called a Z-hook. You can see it's a funky shape. You can see that it's not something that would fit inside of a hole. What this is for is this is for grabbing an, a grabbing string or wire that's really far away. So if I had string in the corner of an attic and it was just kind of sticking up, if I get the string in this part right here and I pull on it, the string will get stuck. And like the harder I pull, the more it grabs and it just doesn't let go, called a Z-hook. This is really handy. I like these. Um, this is not something you'd use on a wall. This is more something you'd use in an attic or going across grid ceilings or something. Um, here's an Allen wrench. This is for your extension. Here's a pretty cool little light. Now this light is intended to go on the end of your glow rod and it's nice and small. So this could fit through a 3 8 inch hole or a half inch hole. Um, with this, what the idea is that you stick this on the end of your glow rod and there's sometimes that you have your glow rod in a wall, in a wall space, and you can't see it. Like if in your attic or something, the glow rod's up in the attic and it's there right in your face, but you can't see it because it's so dark. So it'd be nice to have a little light just like that. That lights up on the end of your glow rod. Super nice, super handy. I love the glow rods made by Labor Saving Devices. They're the best in the market. But in 100% of my custom installs, 100% of my custom installs is this tool right here. This is called the Wet Noodle and Retriever. It comes with this extendable hook too. I don't use the hook a ton. I do use it from time to time. Um, how this works, and we're gonna use this a lot in all my installations. My goodness, if you guys don't buy this kit, buy this and all the links are going to be we'll provide all the links you will not buy this for me the kit comes from me but you can buy this kind of a la carte from other dealers and vendors whatever but this is such a good tool oh my gosh this is how we do custom installs getting wires to and from in really hard to reach places this is called the wet noodle and retriever this is the wet noodle it's just a ball chain it's magnetic i'm sorry it's not magnetic this is a magnetic wand very powerful magnetic bendable wand and obviously these are just steel balls, super handy. All my videos, I use this like crazy. If you guys are subscribed to my channel, you'll see me using this like crazy. And we have this guy right here, they call this the Grab It Mini. Now, I have like the Grab It Full version and I, I don't use it a ton because it's just so big, it's huge. I really like this thing. This is an extendable gopher pole. It extends up to 10 feet. So you take this guy here, Boom, it just keeps telescoping out 10 feet. We're still going, still going, still going. And as you can see, it's threaded on the end. So you can use labor savings devices tools. You just thread them into the end right there. You can put the Z hook on here, the J hook on here. All those different custom tools, you put those on there. You're in the attic and you've got the wire that's way in the corner and you can't reach it. That's really where this is handy. Or if you're doing like a tile grid ceiling at a school or hospital or something, and you've got to reach across, way across tiles, Boom, you stick that up in the ceiling, extend it out, put the hook on the end, grab the string, grab the wire and pull it. This is a really good product. This is the kit, the installer's dozen. This is the kit that we're gonna, we're gonna try to do all of our, like all of our wire fishing tools. We're gonna try to stick to what comes in this bag to see if we can pull it off. I think we can. Um, I haven't, I legit, I legit haven't started this installation yet. So I legit like don't know what tools we're gonna need. I think that this is gonna be enough. I, this is a real install guys. Like I'm not trying to cheat the system. I'm trying to show you guys like really how I go through the whole thing. I also don't wanna forget, I'm using electrician string. I actually have used a few different kinds of string to do installs and electrician string is just easier. It's stronger, um, it's really thin. It slides through walls easy. It's better than like any other type of string. They have like, you know, contractor string and whatever. Electrician string is just really good. Uh, I like to use blue tape to mark all my obstacles and then I'm using drills. So I think that's pretty much all the tools that I'm using today. I haven't started yet, so I might need more, but uh, let's see if we can get it done. First thing I'm going to do, drill through the face of this. Um, I'm using a three quarter inch bit here. There's only a, a, like a half inch gap in between this piece of wood and that panel in the back. All right, there's the hole with the wood panel behind it, kind of angled up into the left. That hole that I just made is going to be fully 100% covered by the thermostat, not even worry about it. So I just kind of remove the panel. This hole right here, this is the one that's coming through that we drilled for the uh, thermostat. Okay, so I'm going to come up through this corner here, and we're going to go up at an angle. You can see that screw there. I'm not going to want to go that by that screw because I might um, damage my bit. Using a half-inch bit, 
They come up here and I want to come up as steep of an angle as I can. Well, I'm going right into a stud. If I keep going, I'm gonna pop out the other side of the wall, which I don't wanna do. So we need a new plan. So I wanna put the thermostat here, okay? Some of you guys might be saying, if you guys know how to run wires, you might be saying, dude, it'd be way easier if you put it here because then the wire would just go straight up and into the ceiling. I didn't wanna do that because number one, these walls kind of suck. They're just, there's nothing to attach to and anything that gets attached to these really thin walls like this, they fall off with time. And this door is always closing, it's always bumping this. And then if it was bumping this, it would probably just fall off and it would just, I would hate it forever. So that's why I went over here. What we're gonna have to do here is I'm gonna have to put a hole in the front side of the cabinet here. Inside, it's all gonna be hidden. Run the wire hidden inside the cabinet. You know, there's gonna be that much wire exposed and probably two half inch holes inside the cabinet. I don't love that idea, but you're never gonna see it. With the cabinets closed, you're never gonna see it. And it's just kind of like my OC that's eating me up. But I, I feel like we're, that's gonna be the best way going forward. So let's go ahead. Half inch drill bit, making sure I go to the left of that stud. Look at that, these things are like, like paper thin, dude. So what I did is I wanna make sure that I don't drill through the roof of my uh, RV. So I kind of want to mark where the top where the top plate was. And in case you guys don't know what I'm saying when I say top plate, at the top of the wall, there should be a, a board going sideways like this. Um, I just put a piece of blue tape on my glow rod right here. This is actually a viewer suggestion. Um, it's a pretty good idea. This way I can kind of track where my drill bit is, how far I've drilled, whatever. So with that, we're going to go through and we're going to drill through the top without going through the roof. Now let me tell you guys why this works. This works because the back wall is actually working to straighten out my drill bit. Um, so if I put a little bit of pressure into the, the, into the drill bit going into the wall, the drill bit's actually gonna go into the wall and then follow the wall straight up. So that's why it kind of works. So let's see what happens. I am gonna watch the back side of the wall just in case. So far so good. I love it. So it feels like I just went through. I did not go through my roof. I did not go through my back wall. We should just be into the ceiling space. Money. There we go, perfect. And I just felt it pop through. Went about that far, perfect. We should be right where we need to be. Awesome, that went really well. So now we have a hole from here and we're up into the ceiling. We have a hole up into the ceiling space without going all the way through the roof. Here's that stupid wire right here. Now we need to go this way and this way to get to uh, where the hole we just drilled. The best way to cross this ceiling with studs going perpendicular to where you wanna go is to start with a big hole on the one side that you're gonna work out of. I, I know that's not really an option for a lot of people, but you know it's either have one big hole or have a million small holes. In this case, we've lucked out because we have this big hole for the air conditioning grill. Um, I didn't put this hole in here, it's already here. I've already kind of dropped the air conditioning unit out of the ceiling and we're gonna try to go through right here and then we're gonna send it down several layers. We'll show you how to do it. That wire seems like it's uh, gonna be out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna drill right here. I'm not gonna hit anything. I know I'm not gonna hit anything. Right there, that's a half inch hole. Next. You can, you can use um, extension drill bits, or you can just use a really long drill bit. Uh, extension drill bits are sometimes better. Sometimes these are better. I'm gonna try this one first, because that's what I have on me. This is where it's gonna get tricky. Your drill bit, if it's at an angle over a long distance, even though it's a small angle, it might be pretty steep by the time it gets to the other side of the drill bit, several feet away. So you gotta be careful that you're not too steep at an angle. So what I do is you can either put your scope down in the hole in a second hole, like I have a second hole right here. You can put your scope in the hole so you can see where your drill bit's laying out, or you can kind of like take your drill bit to the extremes, tilt it all the way up, 
tilt it all the way down and try to find the middle, okay? I'm gonna try that way first because that's a little bit easier. Getting my scope down there through insulation can sometimes be a hassle, but I might have to stick my scope down there anyways. So I'm gonna try to do it by fill first. Okay, that's all the way up. This is where it gets really weird for me. If you're watching how I'm maneuvering that drill bit around, my hand pops through. I'm kind of like, I get kind of stuck, moving around, moving around, moving around, boom, pops through. What the heck is going on? How does it go from stopped to all of a sudden popping through? I'm super confused. I pulled out the scope to do a little investigation and let me show you guys what I found. Okay, here I am. This is a shot of the ceiling with my scope. You can see the piece right here at the top, that's the top brace. The one at the bottom is the bottom brace. And then in between, you can see that gap. That gap is held open with kind of a, a vertical support. This is the vertical support. My camera's turned sideways and I've got a kind of a black hook right there in the middle of the camera that's attached to my uh, scope. Don't get too worried about that. But you can see that right there, I'm zoomed in real close on that vertical brace that's separating the top brace from the bottom brace. So now I know how to get through the ceiling. I think that we've got some really cool options here. We're going to use the scope and we're going to try to get this all stringed up right now without drilling any more holes. This is going to be kind of weird, but I think we could do it. I have a knot tied in the end of the electrician's string right here. This knot right here doesn't come out. And then I put one wrap of electrical tape, one wrap of electrical tape. That's really important. What I'm going to try to do is run this glow rod up through the wall over there so that this loop is sticking into the ceiling space where I drilled the hole er earlier. Then I'm gonna get a hook. I'm gonna try to hook this string and pull it. If I tape it too tight or if I put too many wraps, I won't be able to pull the string out. I want to pull the string out of the tape, okay? That's why it's kind of just loosely taped right here. I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna try it. One of the things I like about this scope is you can untwist the top right here. I'm just un quit untwisting the little cover. And then it comes with these hooks that you can uh, hook onto the end. Hey, test long. I like these hooks a lot. They need to be a little more rigid. Okay, so now I've got a little hook screwed onto the end of my scope. I'm gonna send this thing down and try to hook that loop in the string. I have been fussing with running this wire for like an hour and a half and it's kicking my butt. I, this is way harder to run RV wire than I thought it was gonna be. So I've been trying the method of going back and forth between the, uh, the glow rod and the camera and it would be a really easy install except for the insulation. The insulation is killing me. I can't see, I can't drive my scope where it needs to go. I can't drive my glow rods where they need to go. I'm pretty sure I have everything really close but I, I just can't see. I can only see like one inch around the scope. So I found a really good idea. Um, I'm inside of the closet. So this is the closet right here. And you can see I drilled a little hole right there. What that's gonna do for me is if you look, this hole right here is now aiming towards there and you'll never see the hole. I'm not gonna run the wire through there. I'm just gonna use that hole to get the wire closer. So um, I know that's a little confusing, I'll show you what I mean. I tied a string on the end, nice little loop, taped it on loosely. I'm gonna send this down through this hole. What that's gonna do is that's gonna get me closer to the air conditioning um, duct or that controller where I have a much bigger hole to work with. So I'm hoping that that works. The glow rod should be in position. My daughter's like dumping the glow rod around. I can kind of hear it clicking this direction. Okay, this is the part where you really need a second person. And this is where I was talking about earlier why it's nice to have a scope that works in real time that doesn't have a delay. Because I am talking to the person who's operating the glow rod. I'm saying things like, okay, go forward an inch, go back an inch twist just a little bit, adjust this way, adjust that way. And it really, we're, we're fussing with just like tiny, tiny, tiny increments of twisting and pushing and pulling before finally we get it. You can see that 
took a long time to, to get it and lined up. That's the hook on the end of my scope right there. Finally, I'll hook the string right about now, and we are out. Um. Ah, ha, ha, ha! Leah, wave, wave, wave. That's Leah giving me a hand. Okay, Leah, go ahead and pull that thing as hard as you can. Hard, hard, hard. Pull, pull, pull. Go ahead and stand on the ground and pull. There you go. So I've got the string in my hand, and Leah's just going to pull the glow rod off of the string. Now we have the string from here to the closet and that closet is sitting right next to the shelf. So from here, it should be cakewalk. Okay, I wanna take a minute, make sure we're all on the same page so we understand everything we've done and everything we have to do. Um, we've got this string right here. It's going up to the air conditioning unit. It's going across the ceiling diagonally and it's on the other side of this wall in that closet, in that corner. It, the string is just kind of hanging out in that corner um, in the closet. Now, I've got to get that hole in the closet to match up to this cabinet here. That hole in the closet on the other side of this wall is about 12 to 13 inches from this edge. So if I go 12 to 13 inches from this edge, that puts me like right about here. So I've got to put another hole here to get the wire to go, to go in. If I drill another hole right about here where that blue tape is, that should get us to where the closet is. On the inside of the closet wall, there's another kind of false wall. So it goes the false wall, the real wall, and then the false wall right here that I'm drilling through. So if I drill it, another hole right here, it's not gonna come through the other side of the wall. It's gonna go into the false wall of the cabinet. Let's take a look at the scope. Going through the cabinet. Then that's the back of the false wall of the closet. And that is the front of the false wall of the closet right there. This hole that I just drilled should be just about underneath that other one that's in the closet that has the string coming out of it right now. You guys are about to see why I think that the ball chain and the retriever are the best tools in the world. So this is the ball chain right here, this floppy, it's like just like a chain of steel balls and uh, super bendy, right? This is very fragile. You don't use this to pull wire. You use this to pull in your string and then you use your string to pull in the wire. Okay, let me show you guys how this works. And this is the magnetic retriever right here. I'm gonna take the floppy end of the ball chain and I'm just gonna start stuffing it down in this hole. Now that we stuffed in a whole bunch of that ball chain and that hole should be sitting pretty much right above this hole, I can stick this magnet through that hole and it should grab a hold of that ball chain might take a couple goes. And victory. Remember, do not use the ball chain to pull your wire. Use the ball chain to pull the string, then use the string to pull your wire. Otherwise, you'll snap the ball chain. Here's my string. Gonna tape it onto my ball chain. Ball chain, dude. Best tool in the business. It is so money. There we go. All right, man, that's pretty much A to Z. Here's a little tip for you. Every time you disconnect a string, um, tie it to something that you don't accidentally pull it out because that would be disastrous. That string right there was hard to pull in. I've got it tied off, but that would have really sucked. After all that work that we just did pulling in all these strings, I can't think of anything that would be worse than losing the wire from the string. So make sure you guys do a really good top job tying this thing off. I don't typically do like half hitches when I'm doing one wire, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Okay, so what I do is I just tape the back of the wire like this, and then you're just gonna put three twists in the wire, three twists in the string. Right here, boom, there's one. So if you do a half hitch wrong and then you pull it, it'll come undone like that, right? So when you do the half hitch right, when you pull it, it cinches on the wire, just like that. And just one little twist. One little twist. Uh, one, there's two, there's three. Now when you tape down your half hitch, your string will break before your half hitch comes out. So when you're taping it, all you really have to do is just kind of tape it tight so that you don't have a lot of slack around. Um, you don't want too much tape at this point. Anything, anything bulky will just, it's just another catching point. We don't want that. 
Don't make mistakes. Okay. Let me put this up. Try to make it like a smooth transition from the string to onto the wire. Everything that can snag will snag. So keep that in mind. Alright, there's the, the wire right here. Now I've got to pull it over the air conditioning unit. Since I really like the head that I did here, all I'm going to do is just tie these strings together because I don't want to redo the head. You just take the strings, do a simple knot, one simple knot together, that string will break before that knot comes loose. Ugh. I did not do a very good job explaining what we did inside of this hole inside of the closet. So we ran the wire from this hole over to the air conditioning unit, and then the wire went back into the same hole and down to the cabinet below. So the wire never actually runs exposed in this cabinet at all. This is a shot done. The wiring's done. The job is done. This is what it looks like completely finished with no wire showing at all. The wire is going to run exposed from where it's coming out of the wall now to the hole just to the left of it, and then we're going to hide it from that hole over to the one on the far left. I initially wanted to use the ball chain and retriever trick, but it wasn't working quite as well, so I just used the retriever itself, put a little bend on it, and it seemed to work just fine. Oh my gosh, we had to pull out all the stops. We had to use all the tricks to get this one in, but it's pretty clean. The only damage that's gonna show are gonna be these two little holes that we put inside this cabinet and that one little hole that we put inside of that closet back there. And really nobody's ever gonna see those unless they know exactly where to look, especially that one that's back in the closet. That one's kind of like tucked up and you guys stick your head in there and kind of look around the corner to even see it. So I'm really happy with the way this came out. Here's the wire coming out of the air conditioner. Here's the wire right here that's going for the thermostat. The thermostat will completely cover this hole right here. I'm gonna clean everything up, put everything back together, put the panels back in. But guys, this was a really cool installation. Thank you for sticking around. Remember guys, if you're gonna get a scope, I highly recommend Teslong. Don't forget to use my coupon code. It's gonna be down in the description. And the best, the best install tools in the business are made by Labor Saving Devices. I'll put a link to their website down below. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I'm Alan from UDAV, and I'll see you next time.